Okay, hi. Um, I read this uh, Sunday. Today's a Monday evening, but um, I'm going to tell you about a terrific little um, novella or short story. It's It's got a great cover, and it's The Transposed Heads by Thomas Mann. And it's uh, an exotic tale. Um, and it's, uh, the full title is The Transposed Heads, A Legend of India. And um, just in the translation that I have anyway, it really gets, I, I get a sense that uh, Thomas Mann was trying to write um, like, a, like a fairy tale or uh, like an, like a, Indian story like it, it has like the same feel as um, the same writing quality that you would find in like the Upanishads um, and it's all it's all intentional but it's a, it's a great story it's uh, these two friends um, <clears throat> they have Indian names that um, I can't easily pronounce it's Nanda and I can't remember the other guy's name Samsara, I don't know, but it's two friends, and the beginning of it, they have these like metaphysical um, arguments, con discussions. They uh, have di different viewpoints on uh, um, like metaphysics, and, and it's um, at least like a little confusing to me which I thought like kind of added to the story like this the whole book is so uh, mystical uh, and strange but they, they had these you know just conversations philosophical conversations um, they're out in the woods and they um, at some point there's uh, like a be beautiful girl that's um, um, bathing in the water and she she unbeknownst to her uh she's not alone so th these two are like in the woods and they're um just like peeping toms they're they're watching her when they shouldn't be watching her and they talk about that um but a little bit while goes on and um It's, it's this great like love triangle story so one of them um, it will is, is going to be getting married and um, they're going to go off to this other village and they uh, they come upon a shrine and uh, the one friend goes into the shrine and um, I, I won't I won't really while he's in there, in the shrine, he decides to decapitate himself. The other two, the, the uh, kind of bride-to-be and the other friend are waiting and waiting. They think this guy is just kind of praying. Finally, the bride-to-be says, can you go in there and just kind of drag him out? Um, and the guy going in is like the, the one with the brawn. Uh, the the one that just decapitated himself was sort of supposedly the brains. Um, he goes in, realizes that this man is his his best friend is beheaded. He has a series of thoughts in his head. He decides to decapitate himself. Finally, the bride to be goes into the shrine sees all this stuff and then she decides that she's going to kill herself she gets stopped a goddess like mother uh mother earth or there's like, a, like an indian name comes down and they have like this really strange conversation um the goddess uh is speaking condescendingly and just you know like these anyway they, andy andy come on move it <clears throat> come on move it move it um, the goddess says to the bride-to-be, um, here's your chance. 
go back in, place the head back on to the body, and don't do it too quickly because you have to allow time for all of the blood that's pooling all over the floors to get sucked back up into the body. So she runs off and in her haste sticking the heads on and she her biggest concern is getting the head in the right orientation stuck on she puts the wrong head on the wrong body so when they come to and they're now back to life the two friends uh, now have each head on a different body come to find out or you find out a little bit earlier that she's pregnant uh, she, so the, the, the one friend had impregnated her and now they start having these discussions of like is it the heads you know the the, the guy like is the the head the father of the baby or is the the body with a different head different person's head is is, is th that body now the father of the baby and it's a it's a it's a very amusing story and has lots of questions of like what what aspects of love come from um which is a real pleasure there's lots of like mysticism and uh, kind of kind of magic um lots of um um uh, in, in religious Indian discussion um, and th there's sort of a conclusion like it goes on and things happen but um, everything about it is so great um, Thomas Mann I think uh, th this is sort of like a non representative represent uh, non represent it doesn't represent um, most of Thomas Mann's uh, writing. You know, he, he wrote uh, like Budden Brooks, and um, there's certainly a lot of uh, mystical qualities in um, uh, Dr. Faustus, um, and a lot of religious qualities in um, uh, Joseph and his brothers, but um, really not to this extent. This is kind of like a whimsical, fun little story. Um, one of my favorite things about Thomas Mann is I, I feel like for all of the modern, the, 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 the great modern novelists, um, I always felt like he was the most generous, uh, as in uh, he, he understood where the reader was coming from and wrote in a way that always let me feel more comfortable. He has a great... Uh, preface or intro to the magic mountain and the magic mountain is like a it's a tome it's like a you know, thousand pages or whatever it is and he pr pretty much Thomas Ma like explicitly says like I know I know it's long but I'm gonna be there with you the whole entire time so don't worry um, we're gonna get through this and all of his books ha have that um, kind of paternal feel of comfort. Like, it, it's not like <clears throat> um, some other novelists that you can sometimes feel like you're just completely stranded or out, out to sea or, or even neglected. Um, like, for as much as I love uh, Tom, uh, uh, Marcel Proust, sometimes you get the sense that He's forgotten how long he's been talking for um, and I've never gotten that sense with Thomas Mann um, he's a completely controlled writer um, I guess I went a little bit off topic but wonderful little story and it's a breeze uh, to get through a tiny little thing um, I didn't go through the whole plot but I mean it's really worth reading uh, I loved it um, so uh, leave some comments if you'd like, um, and uh, thank, thank you for watching.